my next guest um, has enjoyed a six, having enjoyed a successful career managing boxers, Kelly Maloney has since become an inspirational transgender figure. She appeared as a housemate on Celebrity Big Brother and has also produced an in-depth documentary following her journey to transition called Kelly Maloney No Going Back. And she now has a new documentary on Amazon Prime called From Frank to Kelly. Um, joining us now is Kelly Maloney. Hello, Kelly. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Take it away. Yeah, um, obviously, I'm very interested in uh, the Dame's speech. And I was actually the opposite to her. I always wanted to be included in the game. I always wanted to be part of, of the in crowd never wanted to be left out and from the age of three I totally felt different to how my brothers felt how um, my friends felt and I, I I never wanted to feel that you know I always wanted to be I'm the oldest of um, three sons I'm now the oldest daughter in the family um, and I never knew what it was I went through my life um, being the eldest son in an Irish Catholic family, working class, is a very hard thing to be open about anything. I never felt that I was gay because I was never attracted to boy. And I was never physically attracted to women, though I loved their company and I felt very comfortable in, in women's company. And it wasn't until I read an article in the, I think it was around, I was about 12 years old, if I remember right, about April Ashley who was my role model, and I do agree that we all need role models. And I read this article on April Ashley in the Sunday uh, People and how they destroyed her life and totally dismissed her. It, and it ran for weeks and I read, but I could relate to everything in that article. And for the first time in my life, I realized that I was born in the wrong body, but how do I deal with it being the oldest um, boy in an Irish working class family and a father that really encouraged us in sport. And it was sport that kept me sane. But again, I went into a sport that was an individual sport, boxing. I was never a great team player. Um, I hated being employed in companies at, at a young age when I went through, so when I first started work. Um, as soon as I was able to, I went to work on my own. And boxing helped me. I hid my true self. I was lying to my family. I was lying to myself. I was lying to my friends. And when you're lying, it is the hardest thing in the world because you have to be someone you're not. I, for some unknown reason or for some lucky reason, my boxing career took off. And I don't know why to this day that Lennox Lewis, the 1988 um, Olympic gold medal heavyweight, decided to sign with a little boxing promoter out of Peckham, Frank Maloney. And from that minute, my life totally changed. Um, I started to produce this arrogant little cockney guy that never really cared about anything other than being in front and being afraid of people finding out how I really felt. You know, people saw this guy in the Union Jack suit who was about, around about town all the time, was always surrounded by women and... Uh, gang of guys that we partied hard we worked hard and we partied hard and you know I made comments about society you know I unfortunately I made a mistake and I joined Nigel Farage's band of um, imbeciles and um, I stood for the mayor of London in 2004 and I made comments um, reflecting to the gay community which I greatly regret and I had the privilege of standing at another UKIP convention when I came out in 2014 and Farage thought I was going to stand and say I was a member of UKIP so he could then say UKIP are inclusive but I stood there and I said I stand before you today not as a member of UKIP but as a member of a community that is struggling to be accepted that people dismiss and I also stand here to apologise to the gay community who I made very bad remarks about in 2014. The hall went quiet. Farage went absolutely crazy at me after. Um, but I felt that I'd lifted and, I, and I'd made amendments to what I'd done in 2004. 
I know some people will never forgive me for them comments. They were made. And I've always said this, you can hide from your past, but I can't run from my past. And for 60 years, I was this cockney, rebel, arrogant little guy that walked around uh, London. And it was only when I was able to look in the mirror, face myself and be truthful to myself and become the real me that my life totally changed. I, instead of seeing the world in black and white, I realized it was a very gray area, but I also realized there were so many different colors out there, so many, and I saw the world so different. And I became such a different person because I was no longer lying. I was no longer destroying my family. I was no longer destroying myself because I was being honest and open to the world. And I really believe, and I wanted to have friends and have and become members of teams. And I joined um, groups to work and help other trans people. And our community does struggle. We are, we are very misunderstood. Um, we are where the LGB community was about 15 years ago. At this moment, we are the, the, the right wing press hate mob. Let's attack, let's attack the trans community. We have the feminist group who don't like us. Yes, I am not a biological woman. I will admit to that, but I'm a medically constructed woman. I have the emotions of a woman. I have the feelings of a woman and I can never ever stop how I feel. But what I do have now, I have the happiness that I've never had before. I, my children say that I'm a much better parent than I was in the past. My friends say I'm a much nicer person than I was. And I'm not trying to be someone I wasn't. And I think the minute that you stop lying to yourself, you become a totally different person. You become more accepted in society. You, you get on with people. I no longer what I, I still live a very quiet life and a very private life, though I was in Celebrity Big Brother and Celebrity Master Chef and a number of other um, programs and documentaries have been made about me. But and I've just signed a contract to have my life story made into a feature film with a big American uh, production company. But what I am now, I'm a happy person. I'm so contented. And I want to be out there to help others. You know, I want to be able to give something back to society. I don't want people to be afraid to be who they are the way I was. You know, for 60 years, I was afraid to admit who I was. I was afraid to look in the mirror and see the real me. But now I look in the mirror and I do see the real me. I actually smile now when I look in the mirror, something I've never done before. I smile in photographs, you know, and I look, sometimes I still look at photos of Frank Maloney and Kelly Maloney. And the difference is amazing. And that's because I am no longer lying to the world. I am no longer lying to my family because I, I was destroying my family by lying to them. I was destroying my, I, find, I did destroy my business and that's why I had to walk away from it in 2013. I have thought about coming back into the boxing business and I've come back on the fringe, but I don't want to be put in that pressure. I don't want to be put in that world. Um, when I started in boxing, I was always told the world of boxing is like a big pond and it's got a number of sharks, a lot of sharks, and only the vicious and the violent sharks get to the top. I won't name them because I don't want to get sued, but um, I had to become a shark. And unfortunately, I did become a shark. And some of the things I've done, I'm not pleased about, but I now try to make up for those things by being the real me by going around talking to companies and by trying to help other trans people and i always say to people look labels are just labels i don't really like a label though i i accept i'm a trans woman but i tell everyone i'm a woman and but i tell people what i am i am a member of the human race and that's what we all are labels are just things that government tried to give us to put us in boxes i don't believe that we all enter this world the same way, and it's a dead straight road. There's no U-turns. There's no um, reversing back. There's a few bumps on the road because I've hit a few of them, and I've got, I've got over them, thank heavens. But at the end of the day, heterosexual, gay, trans, whatever nationality you are, whatever religion you are, whatever colour you are, guess what? We all go in that wooden box, and we're all going to disappear. 
So to me, the only letter that matters is the letter R, and that is respect for us as human beings. All I ask people do, you may not understand what I've done. I don't understand why it happened to Frank Maloney, but it did. And, but I may not like you, you may not like me, but I respect you as a human being. And that's all I ask for, that I am respected as a human being, not just me, the whole LGBT community. And another thing I don't struggle with, but I've learned to understand it. I, I feel there's a lot of confusion for the heterosexual world to understand the trans community because we're, we're all together, the LGBT. I come from a movement in the trans community where it should be LG, B, and T. The reason, I, or separately, the T should be moved away. The reason I say that is because the T is about our gender, the LGB is about our sexuality. And today, I, I listened to the dame saying how she came out and that. I sit here today, I transitioned 2014. I still don't know my sexuality. And I think I'm going to find it very hard to understand it because there's so many different sexualities coming out every day. And um, I was speaking to a group of university students not long ago, and we were chatting about the different sexualities. And one of them came up with pan romantic. And I said, could you explain what pan romantic is? And they said to me, yes, you, you love the person. It doesn't matter about their sexuality or their gender. You're interested in romance, companionship, and being with someone. If sex happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to you. It's the companionship and the love of that person. And I actually think that suits me. That, that could probably be me. Um, and the reason I say that is, I think, I'm scared to have a relationship with someone. I, I, I'm scared to have a relationship with a man because obviously for 60 years of my life, I was a man. I've been out with men to dinner. It has never ended in success because they're fine until they realize who I was in a previous life. And you just see they're flashing in their head and how it changes. And I want that all to stop because it doesn't matter about the person. It's the person sitting in front of you that counts. It's it's the way that person responds to you that counts. Um, you know, I've got friends. I'm very lucky. I'm five foot two. I can walk out my front door and no one knows who I was. And I, I was never recognised or misgendered when I was living as Kelly until, unfortunately, a red top newspaper decided they, they'd found out through someone who, who I told and they tipped off a newspaper and I was being followed. It cost me a fortune in legal fees to keep it quiet. And I, because I wanted to come out on my own terms and eventually I did because I wanted the world to understand it wasn't about my sexuality. I did, it was about my gender. It was about how I felt mentally. I wanted to stop that feeling. I wanted to kill myself. And I did attempt that three times and I ended up in a mental hospital a psychiatric ward chained to a bed and you know it's not just me that affects that affects my family and it, and it affects my colleagues and my friends and that's something I want to st see stopped why should someone because they don't fit in society as society should see them should be afraid to be their self and they get only escape they can see is suicide that is not the answer the answer is that we all help each other, we work together, and we, we, we just respect each other. That to me is most important. You don't, you don't have to like me, you don't have to love me, but respect me the way I respect you. That is more important to me than anything else, you know. And, and if we get to that stage in life, I think we will start winning. We are being more accepting in a lot of places but I still find a lot of companies play lip service. And that is something I don't like just to tick that box. That's not the right way to go about this. If you want to get the best results from your staff, if you want to be successful, you've got to be inclusive. You've got to accept diversity. You've got to let their people be who they really want to be. If they want to come out of the closet. You've got to, 
let them do that and make them feel as accepting as anyone else in your office or in your place of work. And that's very important. You know, I go to a lot of schools, I go to a lot of workplaces, and I was there yesterday talking, I won't say which company, and, and I they're not ticking the boxes. They are really working hard at it. But after a woman came up to me, very similar to the Dame story about the man, my, my two dogs are starting. Um, very similar to the story. And she had tears in her eyes. And, and I said to her, what's wrong? She went, Kelly, your talk was so inspirational and has helped me a lot. And I said, and I looked at her and I said, why, why is that? For what reason? She went, my child is changed and I've been so afraid to tell people. But by you standing up there and saying what you said, you've made it so much better for me. She, and she said, what can I do to help my child? I said, all you can do is be there. And if you accept your child, your child will grow up, be confident and be accepting in there. If you cannot accept your child, your child will live in a box for the rest of their life. And to me, that is so important. We shouldn't be living in boxes. We shouldn't be afraid to walk out of our front door. I don't think I'm going to see it in my lifetime, but, but I hope that five foot two, six foot two, if you're a trans person, you walk out at your front door, no one blinks an eyelid. They just accept you for who you are. That was just so heartfelt and honest. I really, really appreciate you sharing your story.